Hello Internet, I'm Guy. This video is about adding this panel to my existing array. A few months ago I added five solar panels over there because I had a budget of about two thousand dollars. I've got a little more disposable income and my electric bills are way higher than I expected because I installed some heat pumps recently. So I'm going to detail exactly what was involved in mounting this panel to the array. I started by placing an order with Alt-E and then a few days later I took the two and a half drive down from Maine in my electric Chevy Volt which is charged from my solar array of course and picked up the parts. I think it was amusing that I had a solar panel on the roof rack of my car with my license plate sun powered. I don't think anyone noticed though. So here's a complete kit of the parts needed to install an additional solar panel onto an existing system which is what I'm doing today. You get a length of mounting rail here. This is a seven foot length. I know it goes out of camera here. Um, I'm going to cut it down into the appropriate lengths to add one more solar panel. There are two rails per solar panel and these are the two splicing kits or splicing adapters for the rail. So here's a short length of rail so you can see how these connect. This goes in here, uh, let's see, it goes like that. So they slide in and there's a sharp point here that gouges through the anodized layer inside here to create an electrical bond between the two sections of rail that you're connecting. So again, you need two of these for the two rails, the upper and the lower rails. You also need mounting bolts that um, drop in and then secure the microinverter to the rail. And you also need mounting bolts to secure the solar panel to the rail. I'll show you that in close-up detail. The uh, rails mount to the roof with an angle bracket like this and these um, index to different heights like that so you can adjust the height and then this is where you would put a lag screw into the roof. This is the IQ7 Enphase Microinverter and it has two connectors here. One is for the DC input from the solar panel, so your solar panel has an MC4 connector that are polarized for male or, and female or plus and minus. And this is where the 240 volts AC comes out of the, connect, out of the um, inverter. So then you get lengths of wire that interconnect all of the 240 volt between the two or more uh, inverters. They come in two different spacings, so the wire lengths from here to here are either for a portrait mounting system or a landscape mounting system, minor portrait mounting system. So if, say I was mounting six of these, I would buy a length of this with six of these connectors spaced appropriately for portrait mounting. This end, end phase provides a uh, closed end connector, a little device that clips onto the end of here and screws on to seal off that for weatherproofing to keep that 240 volts safe. Here's how the mounting bolts work. Um, here's a section of rail and these are the bolts you would use to secure a microinverter to the railing at the top here. So you just drop it in like that, rotate it, and then when it tightens up these ridges in here will chew into the inside surface of the railing and create an electrical bond. Similarly, um, there's ridges on the uh, bolt head, uh, the nut head, sorry, um, that will then chew into the mounting plate for the microinverter and make sure that there's a good electrical connection there. Same thing with the solar panning, panel mounting bolts. Drop it in, turn it, and this will have the same ridges in here, but also in here there's a, uh, a washer with little serrations in it, little pins that will chew into the upper edge of the solar panel and make sure there's a good electrical bond. This also has thread lock in it, in both this and this part here, so that as you tighten it down that will seal it up and prevent it from working loose. My first step here is to remove the end caps and install the splices. So these go like this. It goes right in and stops right there. Then I add the rail, which goes like this. And that's fully secured. Now I'm going to figure out how to mount this foot here and get that at the right angle here. So I'm going to drill a hole for my lag screw. So now I can secure this in place. Like this. There we are. Okay. 
Now I'm going to tighten this up. That's good. Put the end clip on here to be tidy. And then I'm going to go off and do the top one. Okay, I've set up uh, a couple of clamped pieces of wood here so that I can get the solar panel up there by myself and rest it on here while I'm securing it. But first I'm going to mount the microinverter, which is going to sit here like this. Drive these home. That is nice and secure and ground bonded to the rail. These are ready for me to plug in. This is the adapter for the uh, solar panel, so I'm going to plug that in firmly, click it in place. Now, to get the solar panel, oh, I'm actually going to loosen these bolts over here. There's a little spacer clip here that comes with these to match the height of the solar panel. So I'm going to take that off and reuse it over here shortly. Meanwhile, this goes back in place there. Likewise, I'm going to go up here and remove this one. There we go. Okay, got those spacers ready. So I'm going to attach the spacers on to these bolts, they snap on, as you can see there. I have one ready for up top, and the other one ready for down here. These can actually just sit there ready to go for when I get the panel up there. Let me get the panel. There we go. Boom, right there, almost. Got to drop this one in right here. Oh, okay, now tuck that up against there. Find my cordless drill, which is hidden underneath the solar panel, of course. Where else would it be? Okay, so now I can secure this first bolt. And this one. All right, now to go up and do the top two. One important step before doing any wiring on the outside is to turn off the breaker for the array that is in question here. You'll notice that uh, my power meter here went to zero. This meter actually shows power for the five and soon to be six solar panels on my one array facing south. These are all the rest of the solar panels of my rather substantial array. So I have a, a south array and a north array on my west facing roof. So on the AC side, this is the end cap that comes from end phase that covers up the end of the 240 volts. So I'm going to remove this cover pull this off and there's a little insert there so now I'm down to bare wire. Here's the uh, cable that belongs to the new inverter so I'm going to slide this end cap uh, nut on and then slide the wire in to this gland here so now you can see that I can tighten this nut down on there and that will close off that and weather seal that whole end there so this is the termination end of the whole wiring system. Okay, now I'm going to break loose the wires from the solar panel. Bring them down here. They're very stiff because it's quite cold today. And tuck those in right there. Let's see, that will look good right there. Plug it in firmly. Same thing over here, just break these loose. They're very nicely, tidily wire tied. So I'm going to unroll this around like that. Bring it around. And tuck it through there. And click that on. That's nicely secured there. That will do. 
Now to the AC wiring. Having completed the 240 volt splice to the power feed cable, I can now simply reach over and connect this in and hook it up and we are done. This is the end cap that is hanging off of here, sealed off and closed at the end. So back inside to the circuit breaker panel, turn on the circuit breaker, and then we have to wait for the inverters all to wake up and uh, start showing power at the output here. So it's showing zero right now, and the moment they all wake up, which takes several minutes, then uh, we'll see the actual result. Okay, and there we are with over 500 watts. Mission accomplished.